Welcome back to the channel, you guys. This is Bert here at the Never Ending Projects. I'm here in my garage. As you can see, uh, it's pretty crowded in here. Since we have the construction of the pool and the ADU, everything that was in the backyard basically got thrown in here. So this is our storage area. I've got rototiller, my old above ground pool, uh, just a bunch of everything in here. And this is Belle, another never ending project, but she's kind of on standby till I can get some space cleared out in here. But um, this video is gonna be covering lawn recovery. I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube for lawn guides and lawn care, but um, a lot of it is just people who have immaculate lawns and they're just showing you all the products that they're using. And a lot of times from what I found, because a lot of information I got is from also from YouTube, but it's all, you know, you get pieces here, you get pieces here, you end up watching, you know, five or 10 videos, trying to get all the answers. And sometimes it contradicts it. You hear a piece of information that contradicts the same information you heard from that same person in another video. So this is gonna be covering um, a lot of information. It's gonna be a little bit longer, but we're gonna go over the products that I'm using and, but mainly the types of products and how they work, which is your big thing that you wanna know. You wanna know how the products work. I've been here for about five years and I've always purchased things for my lawn, but I didn't know what their purpose was um, and how they were released into the soil and how to use them. You know, I expected that they did one thing or do another thing and it, I didn't really have the information there to know how to apply them. So this will be covering how they work and also this is going to be covering Bermuda grass in California. All of your other YouTube channels, whatever you want to watch, they all, depending on where they're at, what kind of grass they have and what area zone, are they a warm zone, a cool zone, we're in a transitional zone so I can grow warm season and cool season grass here. But again, Central California, Bermuda grass. Bermuda grass, you wanna be, this is the beginning of April and probably about the latest you can start when you're, uh, for the growing season because your Bermuda grass is gonna start growing like right now. Bermuda starts growing, goes dormant in the winter, and starts growing at the beginning of spring when your temperatures start consistently hitting 65 degrees or over. So right now it's been pretty cool the last few weeks. We had storms coming in and got a lot of weather, but now it's starting to get really warm. I'm in, in the 70s today and it's gonna get hotter throughout the course of the next month. So stay tuned. We're gonna check out my lawn. You can see what it looks like. It's very small. I have 400 square feet of lawn. It's again, it's not a big yard and it should be fairly easy to get back under control. You wanna follow along and hopefully we can get our yards back up to a respectable, you know, <laughs> lawn and not have it be a sore eye of the neighborhood. So check it out and we'll get back to this So as you can see, I don't have a very big yard at all. Again, it's only 400 square feet. The lawn is usually my problem area. All the planters, even though they look bad in the hedges, um, they're actually not too bad. The hedges, I shape them, rake up the leaves, and the planters, once I weed eat those areas and get them down to dirt, I can just spray Roundup and it won't kill the shrubs or anything. I can just kind of keep those areas clean. But the lawn, since you know I have the weeds in there and I'm trying to kill the weeds and save the lawn, those are, that's my problem area and stuff I didn't really understand how to do until now. So um, before when I had my forest, if you've been watching the channel, my backyard is being remodeled. If you watch, uh, have been watching or want to see what it was like, there's a video, uh, landscape to hardscape video of mine. Um, and you'll see there was like 25 mature trees back there. It was a full on garden 
and be very beautiful, very high maintenance. Between the front and backyard, I usually would just focus on the backyard and the front yard would kind of just get let go and trashed. But there was just so much to do back there. I had two days off from work and I would just kind of spend all my time to the point where like when I was at work, my neighbor across the street, he would like wheel, I mean, he only did it a couple times, but <laughs> he wheeled his, his mower across the street and mowed my lawn while I was at work and blew off the sidewalks. Um, I don't know, I'm maybe to be condescending. I'm sure he, he's a very nice guy, so I'm sure he was just trying to help me out, but I don't need to have my neighbor mowing my grass for me. I'm sure you don't want your neighbor mowing your grass for you. So um, that's kind of where it is. All of my neighbors, they're retired, except for like one, but most of them are all retired and either they have all the time in the world to keep their lawns well manicured and maintained, or they have a very good lawn service that comes out every week and keeps their stuff looking like shh, primo. So I now that I have all the hardscape in the back, it's just all concrete. I'm just gonna spray Roundup in the areas I don't want stuff to grow. Now I don't ha have the excuse of too much work. I I got to get this, you know, back up to neighborhood par. So a lot of information that I got. Again, it's from YouTube. Very much so from this channel, it's called How To With Doc. He's a Bermuda grass guide. He has a lot of information, a ton. And I've been watching a lot of his videos where it comes from. And then again, from landscapers around my neighborhood and what they use, what works for them. Um, but the How To With Doc, very good, but it's like stuck on one product. And it's um, Anderson's, the Anderson's company. They make very good products, nothing against them. He has partnered with them, so that's kind of like what he kind of keeps pushing. And, you know, it is what it is. I actually ended up buying one of their things that I decided that I wanted to get. But um, it's really kind of high dollar stuff. And I was on a budget because I have my money going to my backyard stuff. So I just kind of using with whatever I had since, as it turns out, I had a lot of these things. Um, and it's kind of what most people are gonna have if they have some stuff. But the first thing I did, first thing you wanna know, I said April, this is about the latest you wanna start your lawn. You wanna start usually like March, um, start this going, this process going. But the thing to know about Bermuda is that right now, since it's growing, it goes dormant in the winter time and it starts growing in the springtime, right? Like I said, temperatures over 65 degrees, averaging over 65 degrees when your lawn starts waking up. But anything dead on your grass throughout the winter time is dead. It's not going to green up anymore. It's not going to get any taller or anything. It's just going to sprout new green off of that old dead stuff. That's the only thing that's going to happen. So all of your dead grass, get that off of your lawn. You're, what you're going to do is you're going to scalp your lawn is what it's called. And you're going to take your lawn down to the lowest that it said half, um, half an inch. If you want, you know, to go super low, I got... Since I have a small area, I said, screw it. I took my lawnmower down to the lowest setting and then I went over it with a weed eater and weed eated everything. All the roots are like deep buried against the soil. Uh, all the runners from my Bermuda are all, you know, they're still runners deep in the soil. So I just weed eated over the whole top of it and raked it all up and started fresh. I know this works because all the areas that I used to weed eat in my planters to try to get rid of my Bermuda, those those grew the most thick, luscious grass ever in, in the areas that I did not want it. So I figured, let's do that on my lawn and hopefully we'll get this lawn going. As it turns out, that's what you're supposed to do every year. At the beginning of spring, you wanna scalp your lawn down to the lowest, uh, scalp that Bermuda down to the lowest possible you can get, you know, you can, you can go with it. Once that was done, I put down a weed and feed, which is what I have already have. It was something I purchased years back. I had a full bag of it. I didn't even have a spreader. I would recommend getting a spreader. I didn't have one, so I just kind of threw it out by hand and, and hopefully hope for the best, you know, but this is a granular, right? So you have a granular uh, weed and feed. There's three things that you want to put in your lawn. 
the three basic things, and that's fertilizer, a weeding agent, and then a pre pre emergent. The pre emergent is something that is going to condition your soil to not allow new growth of weeds. Once that stuff is in your soil and kind of you conditioned it to where it's that it, it doesn't it it makes the soil so that that new growth won't it just won't germinate in that soil because of the chemicals that are in there. So this is just the weeding feed. It does not have the pre-emergent. I threw this out by hand, and the granulars are a slow-releasing, slow-releasing product. So as it gets wet, it slowly releases, slowly releases a little bit more, slowly releases a little bit more, works its way into the soil. That's why when you apply this stuff, it's supposed to work for a few months. As you water your grass on the watering schedule or as it rains, it slowly releases. When you have a big rainstorm coming in, you don't want to put this out there because it, it'll wash the whole granular out off the lawn or wherever it's going or down. It kind of wastes the time, wastes the product that's supposed to be used slowly over time and kind of just shoots it all into your into your lawn at once or washes it away. The liquid formulas for weed and feed are kind of right there. Once you put it in, it's like your lawn is able to soak it up right as it, as you're applying it. So this is what I used initially. Turf, the, the only thing I didn't have was the uh, pre-emergent. There is a product Scott makes that's three, uh, all these brands make a type of, um, of um, granulars that are you can apply to your lawn and it has a pre-emergent, the weed killer, and the fertilizer. This is what I have, so this is what I use. Maybe next year I might get that one product. And if you're looking to buy products, I would buy that triple action. It's like Scott's triple action, and it has those three things, and they'll label on the back, pre-emergent, weed killer, and fertilizer. You get that one shot, one uh, application every couple months, and you're good to go. But this is what I have. So I use the granulars for a slow release over the next few years, or uh, I'm sorry, next few months, and then once I went over that, I had a little bit of rain coming, so it was okay. I just had like a one day of a light rain, and that kind of worked in. And then the next day, really just because uh, I kind of was overdoing it with the nitrogen, but it turns out I have this product also. This is a uh, lawn food from miracle Grow, and you use this. This is a granular as well, but those granulars go into this little container here, and you fill it up with water, shake it up, Attach this to your garden hose, and now you got a liquid uh, fertilizer that you can spray on your lawn. So I use this also because I had it just lying around my garage for a quick shot of nitrogen and fertilizer into the soil. Um, this, I said, the soil, uh, you're kind of prepping your soil, like I said, for right now, your Bermuda's waking up and it's starting to grow. You want to get this stuff down in before it starts to grow so that when it starts to wake up, all the nutrients and weed killer and fertilizer is already embedded into your soil so that when it wakes up, those nutrients and fertilizer is already there for that, for that grass to start sucking up and using it to grow. That's the whole purpose of the slow release and then the quick shots of uh, fertilizer in the liquid form. So that's what I had. Boom, use that. Got my fertilizer taken care of. The thing I had to buy was the pre-emergent. Um, there's a lot of really good products out there, and I just kind of was going off of what was affordable for me to buy, so I ended up getting this, which, as I found out, according to reviews, is not the great stuff, but it's not the worst stuff, and that's a Spectracide Weed Stop uh, pre-emergent with some crabgrass controller, killer, preventer. And um, this... I figured, you know, it was $15 from any big box store. I got this from Lowe's and I ended up getting a broadcast sprayer for this, or I'm um, sorry, a broadcast um, machine. It was just like, it's a little hand one from Scott's and um, I only got it because I was like, well, I kind of threw the weed and feed out by hand and I better probably be a little bit more um, dialed in with the, since I'm throwing down basically more weed, weed killer. Um, these actually to go over all of these have how much they cover this is 
the way I figure how to use, um, how much to use. And that's 3,000, right? You have 3,000, uh, this covers 3,000 square feet and the, the bag is 10.8 pounds. So I figure I have 400 square feet and what that came out to was about a pound and a half. And I got like a little scale for measuring flour or food that I just stole from my wife <laughs> in the kitchen and put it on a cup and measured out a pound and a half worth of this uh, granular. All these bags how, on the back have how to apply this stuff. And it even, a lot of them, they all, actually not, not a lot of them, all of them have dial settings for various different spreaders, whether that be a Scott spreader or an Anderson spreader or a True Green or whatever, whatever the hell, they all have, but they all have different ones. They're not all the same. They just have kind of like, well, here's a couple and here are the dial settings. So um, I've heard there are certain ones that are usually pretty uniform, but even that one, I think that they said the Turf Edge Guard, whatever deal, Deluxe, that one's not on here. You know what I mean? You never know what you're gonna get. So simplest way I found, do a little algebra. I don't know how to tell you to do algebra, bro. If you need to fucking YouTube it, then YouTube it. But <laughs> you can figure out how much you need based on how much yard you have. Shouldn't be too hard. You just measure out your square footage of your yard and then throw it in the little equation. And you should be able to figure out by weight how much this of this three of this 10.8 pound bag you're going to need for your lawn, and then try to spread that out evenly. That amount that you come up with, spread it out evenly across your yard. That's going to be harder, obviously, for um, a bigger yard. Since I have a small one, I can just kind of slowly go around and spread it out evenly. But if you have a big yard, that might be harder to do, and you're just going to have to. Uh, play around with the settings you're probably going to get a bigger um, spreader and hopefully has you know maybe when you buy your products look for a product that has your spreader so that you'll know what to set it at um, but that's what I that's what I use again I heard it's not the best and if it works great it covers that you know the 3,000 square feet I can use that for the next uh, probably two years. It's plenty for my small yard. And if it doesn't, oh well, it's $15. I can get something better quality next year or uh, next season and start using that. But as for now, we're going to use this. And again, that conditions your soil so that no new growth of weeds is going to show up. It's going to make it really difficult for the, your, the seeds uh, to germinate, weed seeds to germinate. Otherwise, your grass is not going to be affected. Uh, from this point, of the granulars to condition the soil now i need to kill the actively growing weeds in my yard right i did mow them down but if you'll notice once you scalp your lawn the fastest thing that's going to grow back are the weeds so all the foxtails and dandelions and all that stuff's going to start sprouting a lot faster than your grass is going to grow right so i went over the top with liquid again granules slow releasing agent conditioning the soil over time liquid right there in your soil ready to go so the first thing i did was this we be gone this is a really great product that i've actually been using for years and i got it from the landscaper across the street who takes care of my neighbor's yard she has a really great one um i asked him one day i was like hey man what do you use and he said this is the best stuff especially for my lawn which was really clover heavy and this kills a lot of round leaf weeds. So this is what I hit the lawn with. And when he told me to use this, he said, spray this all over your yard. Just kill everything. It'll kill your grass, but your grass will grow back and the weeds won't. And I was like, okay, cool. So that's how I have been using it for years. I got this again like five years ago and I've been using it like that ever since. Well, this year, since I'm trying to really pay attention to how this stuff works, I actually read the, the directions and it says not to use this as a broadcast application across your yard. You want to use this for spot control. So you're going to be killing the weeds that are growing as you see them. You spray a little bit on there. A lot of stuff like the big crabgrass or the um, foxtails, I'll hit them with the shovel and take the actual grass off, whatever's growing, and I'll spray this on the soil, on, on the roots right there below it. 
so that hopefully it, it sucks it up faster as it's trying to grow back that stock of, of whatever weeds growing there so that's how i kind of actively control weeds is i just go out there once a day and see some big stuff growing and i'll hit it with a shovel take the grass off spray it with either this or the next stuff which i'm going to show you this is spot control hit all the weeds that you see growing and then once i was done with that i came back with this which is another weed stop or spectricide weed stop concentrated liquid formula they make two types of this one is this is the crab grass killer and the other one doesn't so this one only covers like 250 weeds but it has the crab grass and the other one that they have that's a concentrate it covers 470 weeds but it does not have the crab grass so uh, this is what i again i just have this in my garage so i figured let's shoot that i read the directions this you can spray all over your grass it will yellow your bermuda but your bermuda it'll it'll recover so i took this put it in my pump sprayer um, the way I applied it, it was, I think, four, four to five ounces per gallon and dumped that in my per gallon of water mixture, pumped it in my, my pump sprayer and sprayed it all over the yard. That one gallon covered 500 square feet and I just sprayed a little bit extra because I had 400 square feet. So I figured that's not going to hurt anything. Those two liquids are actively killing those weeds and then you just kind of spot control after that after now i just go out there every now and then weed a little bit weed a little bit but um as for those that's pretty much it for the um, stuff you want to put in your soil the only other thing i'm not covering today i'll see if i need to in, in maybe a couple weeks or so is it killing any parasites or not parasites but um insects harmful pests in your lawn. Um, I haven't really noticed any issues with that. Um, I don't know, uh, the, the one way that I know for sure, based on all the information I've been plucking here from here and there on different YouTubes, is that if you notice like a lot of birds in your yard, digging up your grass, trying to eat those, whatever the grubs or whatever harmful pests are in your yard, you'll notice a lot of crows and birds in your grass i don't really have that issue so i'm thinking that i don't have issues but i may in maybe a week or so spray down some uh insecticide um but i don't know what to pick yet i'm gonna do some more research and i'll let you guys know when i do that if i do that so that's pretty much it for the stuff you're gonna put in your soil um from there what you want to do is the next step that i did is you want to start breaking up your soil uh, allowing for new growth and so that these products can penetrate into your soil. So the best thing you can do is get a scarifier, which is a machine that will basically, it's not a dethatcher, you don't dethatch Bermuda, but you um, will cut lines in your lawn so that it breaks up that soil and allows these granulars and stuff to kind of get embedded into the soil and then slowly release over time, right? So you want to kind of prep your soil to get ready to take all that stuff you're going to put into it. The Scarifier, you can rent one or um, you can buy one. They're not terribly expensive. You think I found that you can get one for like 150 bucks. I have, I'm not going to spend 150 bucks. Again, I'm on a budget and I have such a small yard. It's like, why am I going to go buy this big old machine? It's not big, but it's a lawnmower size and I don't need a, that for that little area. If you have a big lawn, you can go rent it from Lowe's or various tool rental supplies. Uh, uh, you can rent those and use them. Great. I ended up going and buying one of these. This is a core aerator and it'll take a plug out of your yard, of your soil, and allow air and kind of loosen up the soil, go straight through the grass layer, thatch layer of your lawn, and for I know this is kind of probably a pain in the ass to do a, a really big lawn, but since my area is so small, this took me about, I'd say about 45 minutes to do my two little sections of lawn and then rake everything up and pick it all up. 40 minutes, 45 minutes maybe. Uh, and I looked online, 
these are normally like $45 and it was on sale on, um, it wasn't on, I mean, it was sold, selling used on Amazon, 20 bucks. So I'll take a bug it, you know, $20 can't beat that. It's from what I found. And as I found out, it is really sturdy, solid. It's not too, this is solid metal. And my kids already tried to beat this up and ram it into rocks or whatever. They were already playing with it the next day. And it's solid. It's, it can take a beating. So this was, uh, I'm really happy with this. Already aerated the lawn and made it ready for to, to loosen up that soil. And the only next thing that I did, which is optional, but I will go over because I think it is a good product. And again, I got the information about Anderson's products. And this is the one thing that I thought it's probably worth the buy. Um, it's Humichar. So Humichar is a mixture of two things, humic acid and biochar. And biochar is a soil conditioner in the simplest sense. It's you broadcast this into your soil over time and it will improve the quality of your soil so that your soil holds nutrients or whatever you want to put into your yard that biochar will hold on to those and slowly release them as your lawn needs it as your as the grass or whatever you're growing this you can put this in your garden or lawn or whatever wherever green is growing this will help that the with the growth of uh, of whatever lawn or plants you're trying to grow. The humic acid is basically a catalyst. It's what your plant uses to actually, I don't know if you want to say digest, but absorb the nutrients. It, it, it's a catalyst to absorb nutrients. It helps them um, pull out the nutrients out of the soil so that they can grow. It assists with that. And then the biochar, um, kind of holds the nutrients in the ground. This is the newest kind of breakthrough in plant and lawn care. Um, it's based on how uh, they got this kind of technology from studying soils in the Amazons and how they got like the Mayans and the, how in Central America and ancient civilizations they used to grow their crops in areas that were not really ideal for growing anything. Um, they produce this uh, biochar, which is charcoal, essentially little granular charcoal, and um, that charcoal holds those nutrients. Just like the simplest way I could explain it, or it made sense to me, was that a charcoal filter, like in your refrigerator, like my refrigerator has a charcoal filter, and you it runs you run water through it. And that charcoal will pick off the, the little pieces of, of chlorine and whatever's in your water from your city line. And it purifies your water, right? Because it kind of pulls all those contaminants out of the water and just gives you clean, pure drinking water. Well, this is charcoal just like that in micro form into your soil. So as you pump that stuff, it slowly kind of gets stuck on that charcoal in the ground. And then so even water and moisture. So like in California, we have droughts coming through where we can't mow or we can't, um, we can't water. We have no water days. So like in the summertime, we'll get uh, hopefully two water days. And in the wintertime, we will get one water day. Um, but say I'm gone for a week or whatever, and I can't mow or I can't water my grass. Well, this, Soil conditioner, the humid char, the biochar particularly, that charcoal, once it's in your lawn, it actually will also help with things like droughts where um, it stores that water in that charcoal. And then on the days that, you know, it goes a couple of days and it's like, man, I need water, I need water. Even though you're not there to water it, it can pull it from the soil that's been conditioned to hold that water and those nutrients. So I figured that's a good thing to put out. You can never really go too heavy with it. It's not something that's like, oh, you're going to smother your lawn or whatever. That's the thing about Anderson's, and I will say about their products, they have this in what's called the DG, and it's a dis 
first of all, granular, uh, I forget, but it's a DG. And what that means is if you put this stuff in water, it will disintegrate. It, it disintegrates immediately. It's not like the granulars that slowly release and kind of like a little layer of that seed of that granular comes off with every water. This stuff will just straight up break apart as soon as you get it submerged in water and kind of soak through, leach through all the blades. It goes straight to your soil and into your dirt which is the quickest way to get the stuff in there. Otherwise, if you just get biochar, it's just kind of like, unless you're tilling up your grass and putting it into the soil, it won't go through the grass. It just will sit on top. So uh, this stuff, the way it is dispersed, it will get it into your soil quickly and you can use as much as you want. So this bag, they sell it in two forms uh, or when I went online, they had a big bag for like $100, it was like 40 pounds, and they had this 12, 12 pound bag for 35. And since I saved some money on my Yard Butler aerator, core, aer core aerator, I said, fuck it, I'll just buy a bag of this human char, which I kind of really want to want to get. So I core aerated today, and then I'll be probably putting that out tomorrow. As heavy as I want, it's just going to go in those... Um, and those little holes that I made all over the lawn and get straight into that soil. I'm gonna water it up because it's probably thirsty. It's been a few days since it's got any water and I'll water it up and that'll be the start of this first set, first uh, kind of workload for my lawn. And then I'll kind of keep you up. I'll probably, it'll probably be a while before I upload the next video, maybe another month or so and see how it's doing. If I get good growth before then, then I'll then I'll get to get to it earlier. But um, that's it for now. If you found this video informative, please hit the like button and uh, feel free to subscribe. I'll be covering light con light lawn content, but again, right now my big focus is on my backyard. But um, if you're following along, if you found this video informative, if you have a lawn that is trash like mine and you're trying to get it. Please drop a comment and let me know how it's going for you. And um, if you have any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, thank you for stopping by. And I appreciate all of you guys. And I hope to see you on the next one. You guys take care.